Hey world, you just tuned in to Singles Get Real with Dr. MV, WGSN DB online radio podcast going solo after dark people. What's going on? Yes, tonight, thank you for first of all for tuning in to my podcast. So tonight, I just want to kind of talk about are you selfish or selfless? in a relationship. So if you're in a relationship, you know, or you're talking to someone, I just want to do kind of like a self-assessment of who are you in the relationship. So we just going to talk tonight. I'm going to come definitely from my experience. As I always try to mention to you people, I am not the bottom line. My voice is not the bottom line, but I do have a voice and that's why I want to share it on this podcast. So are you selfless? Or are you selfish in a relationship? So, okay, so for me, I'm just going to start with me. I'm a single mother, right? And so I'm a single mother. I've been a single mom for a minute, but I've had kids for 20 years now, okay? My oldest is 20. My youngest is 17. So, you know, kids, in my opinion, they teach you how to be selfless, You know, every time I go to the store or whenever I do something, you know, I can't just totally think about myself. I think about my two sons as well. So there was once upon a time, you know, in Dr. Envy's life where I was dating an an older guy and he just so happened not to have any kids, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. I believe that if possible, you should plan your family and move forward in that manner. But this guy... And this is no shade to him, (laughs) but he didn't have any kids. And so in the particular, um, while we were dating, you know, time reveals everything. I believe time tells it all. Whatever your mouth does not say, guess what? Time is going to reveal what you won't say. And so time just began to reveal in our particular situation how impatient he really was. And my thing is, if you're dating me, you're not just dating me, you're also dating my sons as well. So I'm a package deal. Um, you don't just, just try to court me and, and think that that's it. You score a home run and, 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 and you're good. No. So for me, I, I discovered that dating a man without any kids for me is a no-go. And a reason why is because I look for a man to be or display characteristics of not just only thinking about himself or his needs, but he's selfless. He's able to come outside of his own, his own perspective and look at another's, another person's life and consider some things that he could add value to their lives. So at the end of the day, listen, life is a lesson. (laughs) We would all learn a lot if we would just pay attention, people. So, you know, are you selfless or are you selfish? So there's a particular book, and I believe I mentioned this book in one of my other podcasts, but I'm not sure. But I want to bring it up again, and it's by Gary Chapman, and it's called The Five Love Languages. People, let me tell you something. If you're in a relationship or you are praying and asking God to send you a husband or wife, before he do any of that, you need to first find out what your love language is. And this book It highlights five primary love languages, people. And you need to understand what type of language speaks to your heart. You understand what I'm saying? Because oftentimes, and let's just be real, we can go from relationship to relationship to date ship to a situation ship to what was that ship? (laughs) And um, yes, I said ship, S-H-I-P. I I do not curse, (laughs) but I just want to be clear. So... We can go through all of these different type of, you know, new faces, new voices, new criteria, etc. right? Just trying to find our right person, our right match, not realizing we haven't taken the time to really date ourselves, you know? Do you know what type of language, primary language, speaks to your heart? Because if you don't know your primary love language, how are you going to be available for the person that is meant to love you? How are you going to receive it? You know what I mean? And so, you know, I'm just in a, in a process of assessing myself. You know, you, you all know I wrote a book called Bride, which stands for Becoming Royal in Daddy's Eyes. And basically that book is, I'm telling you, you know, my dating life, I'm giving you a little glimpse of what you know, some of the mistakes I've made and, and how I got to where I am today and what I desire. But 
One thing I know for sure, people, is that you have to stop, press pause on yourself, and you have to blow the whistle on yourself, and you have to assess yourself and figure out who you really are. Do not put yourself in the marketplace as if you're emotionally, physically, and spiritually available when you have not taken the time to take care of self. You understand what I'm saying? That is so key. And oftentimes, I just believe that many of us, many of us, both male and female, are so afraid to be alone for a season. Notice I said for a season, people. I didn't close the book on you. I said for a season. Being alone to assess your thought patterns and some of your behaviors that are good and some that are not so good and habits that you should not continue and just the perfecting of your character. You understand what I'm saying? So it's like if we could really just face ourselves, the the true woman, the true man in the mirror and really own up to just who we really are in that moment and begin to take the tools that we need in life, a tool such as reading the book, The Five Love Languages, and allow that to be a tool that can deconstruct old mentalities, deconstruct your old view of the opposite sex or your old view of relationships or, or, or deconstruct the pain that someone else caused you so you can be alone in the healing process And you can begin to rebuild new hope and for a better future. It's kind of like a house. You know, you see an old raggedy house (laughs) and you're thinking that it has no value. But at the end of the day, you see someone who comes along and says, you know what? I want to invest in that in that property. I see value in the property. While everyone else drives by this house and they sneer their nose at it, they don't see what I see. I see value in that property. And to me, that's kind of like what God says to us. He comes by, he comes in our lives and he says, you know what? I'm not going to judge you from that past mistake you made. I'm not going to judge you from the the things that you've done and in your history of dealing with relationships. I'm not going to judge you. Although the outcome of your decisions, it makes you look like something that, you know, is, is undesirable or you feel undesirable. But God comes along and he says, you know what? I want to invest in you. If you would just give me the opportunity to take my tools out and hire some men and come and deconstruct some, and they begin to tear down walls. They begin to tear down walls and pull out, you know, uh, uh, things that are not good in that, that house that looks to be standing on its last leg, right? And what happens? They begin to assess new material. They put new material into an existing frame, and all of a sudden, the same house that everyone drove past and they sneer their nose at is now the most desirable, beautiful home on the block. That's us. I like to think of that as our lives. We go through situations where, you know, it's it's ugly. It, it, it doesn't feel good. And the last thing we need to do is carry around a luggage full of hurt and pain and bitterness from the past relationship. And we're not allowing the other person to come in our lives and pour the real love that we really need because we refuse to be in a season called alone temporarily so we can begin to deconstruct and unpack some things in our heart. And so here's what I want to suggest in this particular podcast. Listen, you have to assess yourself. You have to say, listen, the last relationship that you just entertained And this is me included. I'm just, you know, I'm just the host of this podcast, but this is me included, Dr. NV. The last relationship that you entertained, were you selfish or were you selfless? And then I really want you to draft a list of that last relationship of your pros and your cons. What were the pros? What were some of the positive things that you really honestly can say that you contributed to that individual's life, uh, to that relationship that you've never done before? That right there to me shows your your growth, you know, in terms of your character. You evolve it into this wonderful person. And then be honest with yourself and go to the other side of that and say, you know what? What were some of my cons that were not so good? Some of the negatives that were not so good that I can honestly own up to that I do not want to repeat with a new face, new voice, new expectation, new person in my life. See, oftentimes when you begin to entertain a new person and you haven't dealt with your cons from the last relationship, 
The first thing you do when that person asks you, well, what happened to your last relationship? You begin to throw that other person under the bus. That's not cool, people. We can't throw people under the bus. <laughs> first, start with yourself. Be honest of why the relationship didn't work out. So that new person can assess whether or not he or she wants to invest in additional spending time with you. It's that person's right to be able to make a grown-up decision if they want to continue down the journey of discovering you even more. Because no one is perfect in this particular journey. You understand what I'm saying? Hopefully you do. <laughs> so I want to get into this a little bit further. But right now, people, I am going to go to a quick little pause. We're going to pause real quick. And when we come back, we're going to go into Gary Chapman's five love languages. What are the five love languages that Gary Chapman uh, highlights in his book? How does it pertain to you and me? How can we apply it moving forward, both personally and in our relationships, not just romantic relationships, but even with our family members, our friends, how can we begin to apply the five primary love languages in our lives, people? This is your girl, Dr. MV, and we are about to go to a quick commercial break. You are listening to Singles Get Real with Dr. Envy, WGSN, DB, online radio, going solo after dark, people. Be back soon. Hey, oh, hey. You're listening to WGSN, DB, going solo network, singles talk radio channel where we take a lighthearted and candid approach to discussions on the journey of relationship loss, divorce, parenting, being single, relationships building, dating, and yes, sex. Join our listeners and begin living your best life. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to part two of Singles Get Real with Dr. MV. And we have been talking about on this particular podcast show, are you selfish? Are you selfless? Okay. And I mentioned to you in the first half of this podcast that one of the tools that I suggest everybody go out and get just to assess yourself is a book by Gary Chapman. It's called The Five Love Languages. And that's what I want to spend the second part of the podcast, kind of just dissecting his five love languages. So I'm going to just go right into it. Okay. You may say, well, what are the five love languages, Dr. MB? All right. So number one, in terms of the love language for this particular book, it's called Words of Affirmation. Words of Affirmation. One way to express love emotionally is to use words that build up. Now, remember in the first part of the podcast, I talked about deconstructing and rebuilding. This is what I'm talking about. See, words, are, uh, listen, words can be used to destroy or words can be used to, like uh, he mentioned here, build up. If you're in a relationship with somebody, okay, or you're in that pre-beginning phase of getting to know somebody, in the conversations, it's always kind of that negative tone, you know, to that relationship. That person is not using words to build up. That's a red flag. You have to be an adult, make a decision. Do you want to stay around to see what's going to happen? Or do you want to, you know, check out early? Now, on the flip side, as it pertains to your primary love language, is this a considerable love language that you believe connects with your heart? And if so, what that means is that this is your primary love language. So the person that comes into your life, he or she would have to understand that the way you feel loved by him or her is when they speak words of life to you, when they use their words to help make you feel better, to build up your self-esteem, to build you up, to encourage you. Everybody, I don't care who you are, <laughs> everybody needs some encouragement every now and then, people. So words of affirmation is one of the primary love languages. In some examples that he mentioned that someone was saying in a relationship, 
is, you know, verbal compliments. You know, you look sharp in that suit. Oh, you go ahead and you get that. <laughs> you wear that, right? Or I really like how you're always on time to pick me up at work. Hint, hint. <laughs> um, so just using words to make a person laugh, to, you know, just, just let them know that you really appreciate them. The second love language is quality time. By quality time, they're saying is, I mean, giving someone your undivided attention. I don't mean sitting on the couch watching television together. When you spend time that way, Netflix or HBO has your attention, not your spouse or not the person that you're trying to get to know. At the end of the day, for me, because I'm so busy and life, you know, it, it can become a little bit overwhelming with my schedule. For me in a relationship, quality time is really, really up there in terms of, uh, of a love language for me. But it's not my primary love language. <laughs> but quality time is so key. It's not the quantity. It's not how often we talk. It's not how often I see your face. It's whenever I see your face or whenever I hear your voice. Is there quality in that conversation? You know what I mean? It could be a good five minutes. You know, and I could have been busy the entire day. But for five minutes, you call me out of the blue and you just you use words of affirmation to make me smile in that five minutes to make me forget about everything. But in that moment, we just squeezed all the juice out of that moment. Right. That's quality time maximizing the time that you spend together is so key. So if you're with somebody who um, you know that this is their love language, make sure that you hone in on this love language and you pay attention and make sure that, because at the end of the day, the last thing you want to do is be with someone who really don't want to be with you in that moment. You know, like they mentioned as an example, we're, we're watching TV together. Yes, we're physically sitting next to one another, but we're not really connecting. That's not quality time. You are honed in to the TV. You know what I mean? So it's like engage in a quick conversation. Find out how my day went. Let me find out how your day went. You know, etc. Spend that time together. So no, if you're with somebody who primary love language is quality time, you better pay attention. All right. Number three, receiving gifts. <laughs> so let me just explain how they're putting it here. Almost everything ever written on the subject of love indicates that at the heart of love is a spirit of giving. All five love languages challenge us to give to our spouse, but for some, receiving gifts, visible symbols of love, speaks the loudest. There are just some people out there who love to receive gifts. And this is their way of feeling love. Now, some people may say, well, that's a little shallow or they're gold diggers or they just want tangible things, etc. And And I don't know the motive behind anyone's heart. All I know is that this is one of the primary love languages. And so you as an individual, as an adult, when you spend enough time with the person, that's why the quality is so key. So you can understand the motive behind the individual that you choose to be with and, and share this journey with. And you would understand that you're you're not wasting your dollars on this individual, you will understand the intention of his or her heart. So if receiving gifts is a person's primary love language, you have to understand that. And that doesn't mean that the gift necessarily has to be expensive. It's just the thought that counts. You know, I, I remember back in the day when I was a little girl growing up, you know, you used to write letters to each other in class. Do you like me? Yes or no? Check, check, yes, check, no, check, maybe so. <laughs> Wouldn't it be so cute as an adult for for an, an adult guy to come and write you a, a letter like back in the day? Do you like me? Yes, no. To, you know, I think little things like that are just so cute and adorable. Don't cost you anything but time, okay, and creativity. So know the person that you would. If they love gifts, then you better get the, the paying attention. So going on to the next one. Number four. Acts of service. Oh, can the choir just say amen on this one? Now, for Dr. Envy, this is my primary love language. <laughs> acts of service. What is this? Okay, by acts of service, this is doing things that you know the person you with would, would like you to do. Okay, you seek to please him or her by serving him or her to express your love for 
for him or her by doing things for him or her. So for me, like I mentioned, I'm a single mother. I've been a single mother for a minute now. I've been having to do everything on my own, not just in my home, but I'm also a leader on my job. I also run my own company. I'm a speaker, etc. So I travel. I do everything, okay? So when I'm in a, a, a relationship and a man comes into my space, my life, to assist me in small areas that I wouldn't even think about, that's to me, that's like the world <laughs> because I'm so used to my own two hands having to do everything that I have to do, my brain having to think about these things. I'm not used to that. So when acts of service, even in uh, on my job, when I have volunteers to come and want to help and volunteer, acts of service, people to want to come and step up and, and assist, that speaks to me the most. It speaks to me the most. So any man that comes in my life that I allow in my life would understand that this is my primary love language. And then number two is quality time because I'm so busy. It can't be quantity. It has to be the quality at a time. So that's that. Now, five is the last one. This is called physical touch people. Now, listen, I know we all say we, everybody want to be touched, right? <laughs> well, to some degree. But this person who primary love language is physical touch, this this touch may be a hug. It may be when you're walking past the person, you know, you just kind of put your hand on his or her shoulder just to kind of let them know that, you know, hey, I, I'm here. I'm, I'm next to you. I'm with you. Or rub their back um, or give them a, a, you know, a peck or whatever it is. This person loves physical touch. It makes them feel loved. Okay. So for the five love languages, it's physical touch. It's acts of service people it's receiving gifts quality time and then it's words of affirmation listen people are you selfish or selfless that's what we have been talking about on this particular show and i am hoping that you have been able to understand that in order to move forward in order to understand who you are and your value and your worth, you're going to have to take a, a moment called pause. And you're going to have to assess yourself and begin to go through the deconstruction process spiritually and mentally in order to revalue yourself and rebuild your new thought process and understand what your primary love language is so you can be with the person who is meant to connect with you and build with you and take this journey with you. <laughs> don't go into another relationship or situation just because you're physically lonely that's immature you stick it through you develop your character you work on your goals you work on yourself you should not be single and be goalless you should have goals that continue to build upon themselves. You should have some things in life. You should be conquering some things in life as a single person. And by the time the, the person who's meant to be in your life, they're just adding value. They're just joining the journey with you. It should never be where you're single and you're goalless. You have no motivation. You lack motivation or you're lazy. You're not prepared for another person to come into your life and sit on a couch with you and be lazy with you. I'm not reprimanding you. I'm just saying, listen, we're singles. We're talking, right? If you want the best, you have to be your best. You attract who you are. And that's just the truth about the matter. And some things about us is not so good. And so we have to dissect those not so good things. And we have to replace it with the person we desire to become. And that means it's going to challenge us. We're going to stretch ourselves. Most importantly, we're going to grow and we're going to move forward. Hey, I'm your girl, Dr. MV People. And you have just tuned in to Singles. Get Real with Dr. MV, WGSNDB, online radio station going solo after dark. Learn a little bit more about me, www.drmv.net, uh, and then purchase my book, Bride Becoming Royal in Daddy's Eyes. God bless you. Peace.